And it came about in 1978 was the beginning of this new wave of interest. And that is because uh, during the Carter administration, there was the Act of Religious Freedom for Native Americans in 1978. And up until that time, it was illegal for them to perform their ceremonies and sweat lodge and ghost dance. And the reaction to this, this act of Congress was for Native Americans to begin to teach white people. And there was a desperation in it. I worked with Wallace Black Elk from the Lakota Sioux tribe, and we did a sweat lodge together. And afterwards, after the sweat lodge, he looked at me in the eyes and he said, okay, you understand now, go teach. You have blue eyes, and they listen to the blue eyes. They don't listen to the brown eyes. So you teach attorneys and legislators and ministers and doctors because this is earth healing work and people need to listen. And at that time, there was a group of women in particular that came to this work and, and created lives around it and continued to do this ritual work. And I, I would like to find those women and interview them and find out how this has changed their lives over these years, because it's been 30 years now um, that we, we've been doing this. So I think the important thing to see is it's universal work. So although my connection is to Native American and specifically Lakota Sioux, what I found out is circles exist in all religions. And calling in the four directions and celebrating Father Sky and Mother Earth this is aboriginal, this is indigenous, this is the way the indigenous world works. So we can talk about Native Americans, but we can also find this in Tibet and Bali and Australia and Celtic religion, Celtic wisdom from Ireland and the British Isles. It's all the same stuff. So that's what we learn is all these roads lead to the center, which is exactly and precisely what the medicine wheel teaches.